Leonardo da Vinci once said that water is the driving force of all nature. It is our planet's most precious resource and without water, we would not survive. Home to one of the biggest inland deltas in the world and dominated by the Kalahari Desert, water is especially crucial here. And that's the thing about Botswana. When you have wildlife and nature as your priority, you are bound to find magic. Join us as we explore Botswana with Will of Africa on a specialized photographic tour. We started our journey at Elephant Sands, moved up towards the Kwai River, through the Mbabe Depression, and ending up on the banks of the Chobe River. This Botswana special was one epic trip. We rose to an early sunrise at Elephant Sands, close to the small town of Nata, with Christo already practicing his photo skills. Uh, that will help. Uh, much surprise if you got in your, in your fridge for uh, some broccoli. Not a lot. Not a lot. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, but let's try and make a plan. Okay, However, cool. if it's something different than broccoli, you have a lot of room. Absolutely. <laughs> there, there. That's Tina. She has been traveling with Will for a number of years. Where are the elephants, Chris, do? Right, yeah, close by. <laughs> I think this is a small, a small one. Today we're going to travel in a westerly direction and we're going to actually use the cut line 1920. And it actually divides, it's going to be the northern side of Ngai Pans towards the Mabe, Mabe Depression. And you can't believe it, but a cut line that's 200 kilometers in a straight line. It's phenomenal and uh, hopefully we're going to see a lot of eland and most likely giraffe and uh, your normal sort of uh, browsers and hopefully a pride or two of lions. So today's going to be about a five, six hour drive. We're going to have lunch at a beautiful, beautiful baobab tree. And then, yeah, this afternoon, camping wild. So really looking forward to it. The journey officially started. to Botswana in 4K. We're going to be trying to go to 4K with the Iron Man Adventures. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Maybe my computer burns down with all the footage. I don't know. And uh, maybe you see all the faults. You know, we uh, shoot down a focus and then the focus becomes prominent because, you know, it's, uh, it's 4K. We're on a tour in uh, Botswana and when we started building the Iron Van, the first thing that really popped into my head was Botswana. It's one of those overlanding destinations that you have to visit, and it's on South Africa's doorstep. We are here with Will Janssen from Will of Africa. Uh, we're doing a photographic tour. We started out in Elephant Sands last night, and we're going to be ending up in Chobe somewhere. The places in between are the places that I'm really excited about because we've got a guide with us, Christian, who's going to take us into concession areas where no other people go. So it's a it's a, a very special occasion for me because I've explored Botswana quite extensively and I'm very excited to see some new places. So I hope you enjoy the trip. Christian from Iron Man 4x4 is with us, the general manager in his new Hilux. And then uh, Mick Van Sel will be joining us about two days from now. And then we've got uh, two other vehicles with us and it's a lovely bunch of people met them last night and i'm super excited to just be back in this beautiful country so i hope you guys enjoy it world of africa has been a company actually it's a long story but i'm going to make it very short it started in dubai uh, lawrence of arabia died and he was lawrence of arabia and uh, we thought well now he's dead so i'm going to be world of arabia and that became the whole scenario so when i came back to south africa after 2002, I decided, well, I thought, well, it can't be Will of Arabia in Africa. So it became Will of Africa. But it was only when we started writing down the core values of the world to conserve, the world to educate, the world to travel, we started realizing how powerful 
football of Africa can become. So it started really roughly when I was a horse guide in, uh, in the Waterberg and uh, from there onwards we travelled the world and when I came back in 2004 we started working towards that dream and in 2007 it became a reality. Tired deflating time. What are you deflating to? Two bar. Two bar? Yes. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> <laughs> That's Dr. Christian Winterbach, a wildlife biologist, joining us on tour. I'm a wildlife biologist and I am doing long-term monitoring of large carnivores in northern Botswana. some thick sand uh, and of course the, the Hilux's nose is going like doof 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 doof. Yeah. It's alive. It's alive. A couple of hours into our trip we had our very first special sighting. First day on the on the trip and we've got a pack of wild dogs. <laughs> How's that for a sighting? Christy spotted them um, they're running across the sandy road we're currently driving and now they're under a shady tree just uh, chilling because it's, uh, it's already 35 degrees. But I mean, what a sighting for the first day. Wild, wild dogs in wild Botswana. That is amazing. Northern Botswana has one of the few remaining large population of the endangered African wild dog. I'm still a little flabbergasted that we actually saw wild dogs. Wow. That was such a special sighting. Man, if the trip starts out like this, I cannot wait for the rest. We stopped for lunch at a very unique place, a big baobab in the middle of the Cutline Road. We stopped for a bit of a lunch break in the middle of the road and there's this beautiful bay of app. Check this out. That's Frick, who joined us on the trip with his good friend, Kalfein. And this is the one that we're in the bush to this. That's the one that we're in the bush to this. Three Kermit Tart. Get us welcome. In the middle of the park. It's Kermit Nimus Ray. Goeie Mara. Goeie Mara. And that's Kalfein, who joined us on the trip with his good friend, Frick, and has also been a long-standing client of Will of Africa. What's for lunch? Oeh, you have a pala drovers. This was our lunch. Any medal for Tina? Here it is. Ooh, hello. Hello, Tina. Hello, Tina. Tina. Yes, hello. He could find the cheese actually this time. I, he did. So, uh, <laughs> it's an old joke. Uh, mm. And hopefully around the fireplace, we will have a conversation about mis myself and Mr. Amman nine years ago in the Muremi. So to, long ago. Yeah, I tried to find April 2009. Trying to find a the piece cheese. of cheese. Cost us a lot of money, and we only found it on the real, way we real, out. real Rockford from France and other mature cheddar. And you know what he did? He actually couldn't find it. And then when we got home after the trip, the cheese walked out by itself. <laughs> <laughs> matured, matured. After lunch, it 
was time to kick up some dust. Oh, the body felt uh, where we're at currently is getting very, very uh, dense. It's not a lack of noise to hear your car being scratched. So the cars are getting scratched a bit and I'm sure Chris is not going to like that because his car is like his baby. So I'm going to ask him if he's happy about that. Let's ask Chris. How do you feel about your new car getting scratched? I think I need something strong now. <laughs> really strong string now. Yes! Look at that. I felt it. Keep inside, man. It's. Uh... Oh, yeah. I've gotten over that feeling. The iron van has got mini scratches, um, but uh, a new car, it's, uh, it hits hard. The gift. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Come enjoying every moment of being in the bush. I engaged my hawk-eye vision to try and spot animals as we edged closer to the Kwai River. had the most epic sighting. We're very close to camp and we saw a young lion walking and then the lion actually walked in between the marsh, the wetlands. And that is the picture you see when you come to Botswana. That is like the picture. Oh, that was a lion and wild dogs in one day. That rig on that car is very expensive. I wish I had one like that. But this site with the setting sun and the elephants, wow. Sure, I've, I've, yo, this is one of the most beautiful places I've, I've ever been. This is just absolutely stunning. Wow. I hope we're here for a few nights because I'm not gonna leave here easily. Botswana is a spectacular wildlife area. We have the Kwai River coming out of the Okavango Delta and flowing for about 50 kilometers into the Mababi Depression. This is part of the Okavango Delta and also the Kwando Chobi River system that are the only perennial water sources in northern Botswana for wildlife. So these are key areas where water-dependent species congregate during the dry season and 
that makes for spectacular wildlife viewing. Over the hills of green But I couldn't find you by the horizon I guess you're beyond This trip was really about a collaboration between myself, Will of Africa and Ironman. Um, I've been part of the Ironman brand now for about four and a half years and uh, Mick and I thought how brilliant it would be to actually put our equipment to real tests and believe me we've tested it. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, we had to start off at Elephant Sands. Uh, elephants coming to the restaurant area, beautiful spot to start. We moved on and went to char uh, campsites on the Mbabe River. It's the Kwai River that the name changes into the Mbabi River. I just want to know, well, why are you not coming with? Oh, there's an absolute need this morning to completely sort out this uh, kitchen and everything on it and in it and the little bit of diesel that we had last night. So, but I hope you guys can have a fantastic time and uh, hope you get uh, swimming lions. So thanks, yeah, enjoy. Swimming lions. <laughs> We are going in the Kwai community area. We are going to Kwai River, net near the basis of the grens with Moremi Game Reserve. Okay. We are going to the best game drive areas in Botswana. Wow. That sounds like you have a story with. Swim in the leaves. To us, um, he began work in 1997. He was working on the news in the Delta and looked at the eerste goed wat ons achter gekomen het is as jy nie een leeuw is in jou kwangke Delta. Dan gaan jy nie ver as jy nie wil swem nie. So het het ons op die ou einde dokumentair gedoen dat op Animal Planet was Swimming Lions. We have a very sandy environment that leaves nice footprints when the carnivores walked around. So we use local trackers that are experts at identifying tracks. We count the number of tracks that we find per 100 kilometers, and from that we can then work out carnivore density. Soon enough, we had to do a river crossing, and Dr. Winterbach didn't hesitate to walk the obstacle to check if all was a go. All the vehicles passed with flying colors. Even park guests followed suit. We just had a bit of a water crossing here and uh, it's quite deep. Christo, how are you feeling? Uh, Relaxed. <laughs> we had a tip off of some lions in the area and we had to recross the same water obstacle. A game viewer got stuck and of course we had to help. 
We are about to do a river crossing here, uh, back to some lines that uh, they spotted. And one of the game viewers is stuck, so I need to go and recover him quickly. Iron Man 4 times 4. Iron Man 4 by 4 to the rescue. A quick setup of a recovery rope and some shackles. Christie's new Hilux did its first recovery. The game viewer we recovered led us straight to the tip off, a group of lions having a mid afternoon nap. There's a lot of colors, I don't know where to go. See a lot of colors, only feeling blue. There's a lot of colors, lost within a haze. Don't rely on others to get you through the maze. The dreams are not the same for me. Standing by the shore. Just want to show you how close we are to this lion. Look here, this is a GoPro. There she is. Young female. Young female, you can see her nose is still pink without black spots on it. So she's probably three and a half to four years old. Just getting, being an adult. It is very important for conservation to have numbers of these animals and the range that they're using. If you look at the IUCN red list species, the way they determine if a species is on the red list and in what category, they use the population estimates and the size of the range and how that has changed over the last 10 years. Standing by the shore It was great having someone as knowledgeable as Dr. Winterbach with us to share his knowledge and teach us more about the conservation efforts in Botswana. I studied in Pretoria at the University of Pretoria and in the end I completed my PhD in wildlife management and I've been working here in Botswana since 1995. We did the first line surveys here and in the early 2000s, a group of lion researchers got together and we started the African Lion Working Group. And currently, all the lion researchers across Africa are members of this group. And it's a subgroup of the IUCN Cat Specialist Group. And the idea is that the line researchers all have access to other expertise in the group and that we can also address conservation issues. Botswana has two large line populations of more than a thousand individuals each. That's two of the top ten line populations left in Africa. And these populations are the least vulnerable to go extinct in future. Because they're large populations, they are more robust than the small populations. So that is our first morning in the Kwai, and I must say, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. The wildlife sightings is amazing. We're standing here uh, with the elephant there in the background, getting some last shots, and then we're on our way back to camp. And I cannot wait to get out there this afternoon with, um, with a beautiful sunlight. So with the sunset, it's going to be amazing. So we're going to go to a different spot, uh, Mababe. Absolutely spectacular. Saw lions, wild dogs, lots of elephants. Did some nice water crossings. Very interesting day or morning. In the next episode, we explore the Kwai area a bit further and move into the Mababe Depression. Anymore.